We've had a lot of questions over the last few years about, hey, should I be running different populations as I cross my field in corn or in soybeans? And now there's some talk about this new technology out where a farmer can actually switch varieties as he crosses the field. Is that a good thing? Well, when you look at your yield maps from last fall, that's pretty much as far as you need to go. And you see how much variability there is in your field. Then you look at your grid soil sample maps or your zone sampling maps, and you see how much variability there is in the soil as well. There is money to be made if you know where and when to place different hybrids throughout your farm or different varieties throughout your farm, and also to use varying populations. For example, on our farm, we've got some fields that have very heavy soils in them, and then they also have some sandy veins in the same field where the cation exchange capacity changes significantly, soil fertility levels change significantly. We're going to vary populations once again this year where we've got lighter soils and lower fertility. We just can't support the kinds of populations we can in heavier ground with more fertility. Okay, so we do think it's a good idea to go ahead and vary that planting population in a lot of cases. But what we get concerned about is if you start varying it a whole lot and you have fairly similar soil types. So what I'm getting at here is nobody can predict mother nature. So we don't know if this next year is going to be a wet year or a dry year. We don't know if it's going to be a hot year or a cold year. And all of a sudden if you say, well, you know what, those areas haven't produced very well the last year or two. I'm just going to cut everything way down. Well, maybe you have the right weather for that good ground to do tremendously well. So it's a little bit of a guess, and I just get concerned when people say, oh, I'm gonna vary things tremendously on my farm. That's fine if you've got the right type of soil, like what we're talking about, where we have super sandy ground compared to super great high fertility ground right next to it. By all means, change your population a lot. But if you've got fairly similar stuff, I don't know if it's really worth it to invest the money in changing the population. Well, okay, and then you look at the dramatic change of, well, I'm going to do a whole different corn hybrid here or a different soybean variety here in this part of the field. And when that technology is more widely used around the country, I think it's going to be very interesting because the weather does change significantly from one year to the next. And oftentimes you see this plot winning yield one year, and now it's middle of the pack the next year. And or how bottom well, of the pack. Yeah, how well do you know that variety or that hybrid? You know, there are differences in fields, and I think it pays to really look at the defensive traits that you've got. Uh, let's take soybeans, for example. If you've got hot spots in your field that have high pH, where you're fighting iron deficiency chlorosis year in and year out, you know what? It pays to have that defensive trait and put it in those pockets. That defensive trait is going to do you no good on your low pH, well-drained soil, so why use it there? So if you've got you know, lower pH or neutral pH type soil that's really highly productive, plant that racehorse there. That's why the racehorse falls down sometimes because it gets in the wrong ground. So when you have the ability to do that, I think it could really pay. All right, when we talk about can it really pay, the big question is what's it gonna cost to get set up for some of these things? So when you go ahead to buy a new planter the next time, you wanna find out, all right, what is my true cost? And in a lot of cases, the equipment is coming pretty standard now, so it's set up that way to go for variable population planting. And you might only spend a few extra dollars there, so that might be worth it pretty easily. The variable variety thing might cost you a little more money, but I know in our case, a couple of years ago, we bought a new air drill. Our only cost, literally, was to put some more hoses on so I could run with a couple different varieties in my seed tender in the back. No big deal. If, if I can do that with my air cart and I've got two compartments already, I've got the monitor, I've got the ability to change varieties on the go, my only cost is a few hoses, then absolutely why not do it? So almost everything we talk about here on the show, you've got to run the numbers yourself and decide for yourself, hey, how much does this cost and what's my potential return? In our case, I just look at the variance we have in our field. I mean, it is from really high to really low. And yes, we're doing things to try to make the really low better, but I can't fix pure sand when I don't have irrigation. So I know in those cases, I'm better to switch varieties, I'm better to lower populations and just save the money there and stick more of my dollars into the good ground. There's been a lot of new equipment that's been put on farms over the last few years. 
much of that equipment has the capabilities to do some of these new things. It's yeah. just a question of, do we know how to do that? <laughs> and do we know how to run it? A few years back on our farm, we were talking about at the end of the season, all right, well, what new equipment do we need on the farm? And, and one of the guys that, that works with us said, well, I don't think we need any new equipment. We just need to use the equipment that we have to the full extent that it could be used. And honestly, on your farm, there could be some huge upgrades made for very little expense. You just have to look at what the capabilities of the equipment you have are. So again, we think that in a lot of cases this can pay as long as you're not investing too much money. Even in a crop like soybeans, you could vary the population. If you have iron deficiency chlorosis spots, bump the populations there. That does seem to help. You can switch varieties on the go in soybeans. You can do the same types of things in corn and have some big gains. So overall, yes, we do think these are things you need to be taking a look at and running the dollars and cents for your farm. Well, all of those things don't do anything to address our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed coming up next. <music>